are you an African immigrant living somewhere in Australian continent? This video is for all of us. So gather here, let's talk about it. Today I will be discussing the culture shock most of us had on our migration over here. I would be discussing 19 Dora personal to me so join me in the comment section let me know if you had something similar or something a bit different for those of you who are new in this channel i am simply juliet chinelo you're out and about lady anytime any day and we'll talk about living walking studying here in australian continent and also anywhere else in the world as you know the world is gone digital so if you are new here, hit on the subscription button. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you. Just know that you are part of the reason I'm still pushing on. So the number one culture shock I encountered, public display of affection, emotion, and love. It is not uncommon here for couples, partners to hug, kiss, publicly they don't need to be in club or in the inner room to show affection <laughs> and back home i could remember vividly growing up i cannot um remember seeing my parents for a day kissing openly or that sort of thing the only handshake i could um recall them having is probably during mass when it's time for a canine cool, they'll, they'll shake each other. But here is quite very common for you to show your love openly. The second culture shock I had varied English accent. When I was back home, I used to just think, oh, English is standard, just know your tenses. And Nigeria being British colonized, you start learning English from kindergarten, primary, secondary, university level. And English is also an official language back home so you will think you are a guru when it comes to English language but <laughs> you'll be thrown off balance when you move over here and the New Zealanders will feel Australian has got Australian accents and the choice of words they prefer like when someone from Aussie speaks the New Zealanders will say oh that's Aussie accent and when someone from New Zealand speak your Aussie person will say oh that's Kiwi accent and <laughs> also when you come to different regions and those two countries you will notice that they've got um different preference when it comes to the choice of words and back home we there are not even the um the owner of the language we take english so serious that um we are into big vocabularies but trust me over here the native speakers keep it really simple like if someone wants to tell you i'm moving to a new apartment the person will just say i'm moving house whereas back home you'll be hearing the long vocabularies like i am relocating to a new apartment <laughs> you know that sort of thing and also destroy you off balance to force you into trying to change who you are trying to um pick up an accent that is not yours and that further complicate issue for most people because if you try speaking from the nose super oh you'll be hearing more of pardon i can't hear you i don't understand you so my tip and what i do to keep things simple is to use more common words in the any area that i am in if they prefer to say um moving house i go by it and leave the vocabularies uh, i know about <laughs> relocation so keeping it simple and speaking slowly that's what you need to integrate and not to change your accent and who you are so let's talk about my third culture shock washing the dishes you know most people here use dishwashers but for a handful of them that still do hand wash 
you will notice that they wash dishes here with dishwashing soap and they don't bother to rinse it out they just um keep it to dry put it away or they use the dish cloth to wipe it and i'll be like what happened to the dish washing soap ingredients like the sulfatans the former aldehyde the fragrant the sulfates that are used in manufacturing the soap i did not worry about um picking that up in the next meal since they didn't rinse it out <laughs> so let me know what you think in the comment section about not rinsing out this washing soap and also the fourth culture shock i had pets here pets are very common with families most of them do dog cats rabbits and some do a combination of dog and cat and it's not just um like owning a pet you will notice that these pets are well looked after walked full health insurance and part of the grocery list and shopping <laughs> yeah that's how far they go with taking care of pets over here whereas back home few of us that could afford keeping pets are just into um dogs security dogs for security reasons you know so the fifth culture shock i had drinking tap water on my arrival here when we did flatten i noticed my struggling to just um get a glass of water off the tap and put in my mouth and I had to have I had some of encouragement from my flatmate and I did one or two research to make sure I would be free from cholera and typhoid if I drink straight from the tap and the sixth culture shock I had cooking I noted um, on our going for a barbecue tea or a barbecue party with a friend that invited us over i just noticed that the meat they got um straight from the shopping mall no rinsing nothing straight to barbecue and people over here that are just into meat fish straight from the shopping mall to the pots to the oven without washing or rinsing out the blood a bit that was a bit awkward for me as well so let me know what you think about that in the comment section as well so and the seventh culture shock i had contactless debit card you know back home <laughs> people are people are like careful about it using card talk more of the contactless one that you don't need to put your pin or anything you just present it a few seconds you take it out then bills paid in as much as there's a little bit of security around it that i think you're not allowed to spend more than 80 dollars per day with that <laughs> but i'll be skeptical using such back home or even accepting it as a business owner back home you know why <laughs> and the eighth culture shock i had weather you know like this perception back home that africa is hot um is heated um but i'll tell you that some part here and during certain weather condition here in new zealand we can get as high as africa though uh, the humidity makes a different africa seems to be more humid and when you talk about australia especially um most cities in western australia like pet mababa Bromin, most of them are as hot as africa or even hotter so it's not cool it's not that chilly and very cool over here anyway but they somehow have winter and it's less humid and the ninth culture shock i had fossil fuel emission you know how back home trailers tankers buses are allowed to release all that foaming for into the atmosphere and there's no restriction or anything i cannot remember for the whole years i've spent here 
walking out on the city one day seeing trailer or bus and meeting such pollutants into the atmosphere it is well regulated over here and the tent culture shock i want to talk about transportation you know how back home only the um wretched people poor people they walk on the street and they cycle to walk and stuff like that car is like a mark of class here it is not so you will see a ceo a business owner and a, someone that em employs worker walking to work cycling to work you will see a doctor a consultant cycling to work having a car or the means of travel of your choice is no mark of um how wealthy you are in fact i would say that cars are relatively cheap here because it's just um if you want it it's just a necessity for you something you need it's not necessarily um something that um if someone owes a car is a mark oh the person is doing well and the eleventh thing I would like to talk about, you know how we use the word sorry back home, like someone might trip over or drop something, you say oh sorry. Here when someone falls, instead of saying sorry, what you hear is are you okay? <laughs> yeah, because they feel they are not the reason why you fell down, so they shouldn't be sorry for it. So when you like say sorry to someone when something happens you sound like an ally from another planet. <laughs> so the 12th culture shock I received is around workplace how managers behave. You know back home managers at workplace they show class, they drag their foot to work and you know how general it is, but here, uh, managers start work on time, they have schedule, <laughs> they are booked for, yeah, and managers are like normal human beings, they are humble. I could remember in my first job at the staff room during break, the manager doing the dishes that everyone used for tea. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in back home, the manager will instead say, yo, 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 come and clean this place up. But here is not so, and for most managers, they have this fixed contract or fixed salary that they do the managerial part of the job. And most of them work Monday to Friday and earn that basic salary. You that is even under them might end up earning more than them if you pick up hours and work more so being a manager here is just more of a title <laughs> yeah a title it looks good on the paper good portfolio good name it, it has got um nothing so much to do with your take home if you understand what i mean yeah so the um 13th culture shock i got begging I know you would be surprised what are beggars doing in a developed world. <laughs> yes, um, there are beggars, yeah. Yeah, but very few of them, not really like loitered, corporate begging and all that like it used to be back home because of course there are more jobs here. So beggars don't like they don't like feeling entitled, if you get what I mean, like I could remember why in Lagos does someone a beggar approach me for money and willingly I really wanted to give but when I opened my handbag um <laughs> my handbag was lying to me and what I had was just what would be enough for me to um get myself home and I turned to the beggar and I was oh sorry um, I haven't got any to spare. <laughs> I received the cost of my life that day. I was cost. To <laughs> As on, you know how it is, but here, even when beggars want to beg, they try to put up a skill. They might be in front of the shopping mall 
playing a guitar with their sign display or singing they don't feel entitled even if they approach you and say have you got a few cents or have you got a few dollars to spare for me if you say um sorry i've got none is they're okay with it they'll be like okay no worries thank you thank yeah you. that's how it is and the 14th culture shock I want to talk about is um title. <laughs> you know how it is back home. A PhD holder wants to be addressed by doctor. A medical doctor wants to be addressed by doctor. A pharmacist wants to be addressed by pharm. A nurse wants to be addressed by nurse and barrister and all those big names here. Your identity. <laughs> and your your name is your first name as i am juliet i am juliet they don't want to know if you if you're a phd holder if you are these and that with the title stuff we keep it simple down here yeah so the 15th culture shock i had smoking you know how if you smoke back home you feel a little bit guilty about it <laughs> no yeah it's almost like a lifestyle i would say like in most jobs that i've done would i say 90 percent or 95 percent of my meds smoke and you would see every break they are more concerned about going to puff off a few sticks than actually <laughs> taking the break yeah and they often go with the smoking meds and that's how they ease pressure off, uh, puff off few sticks then come back. So, and yeah, there are places that they have designated area that you're not supposed to smoke openly, but <clears throat> smoking is at another level. <laughs> it's more of a lifestyle than what it used to be back home. So... The 16th culture shock I had, how you address people. You know this um seniority something like, I am not allowed to call my elder brother by his name. I have to go by the name like Bronnie to show he's my senior. I, I don't want. You know, things like that. But here it is not like that. You... I, I could remember struggling calling um, an elderly woman I worked with by her name and she understood she was like Julian it's okay call me by my name my name is Francis <laughs> that was how I settled and became comfortable with calling her by her name because it, it was an official environment I was stuck between should I call her mom Francis <laughs> should I call her auntie Francis I can't just get my head around it calling someone that it should be like a mother a grandmother to me by her name so the seventh culture shock I would like to talk about is education <laughs> you know how it is now back home people acquiring degrees certificates in the higher institution it's just so much fantasized on as if that is the yardstick or the basic for a successful life and becoming financial financially independent but over here people focus more on acquiring skills and experience to the extent that you might finish your phd and you will see yourself under a manager with just um a, a college holder as your manager but with extensive experience in that field <laughs> so it's not really certificate certificate over here yeah but education is not a scam i'm not saying that so the 18th culture shock i would like to talk about today is um what would I, I would address this one as um greetings you know like back home you can't see you cannot see your mom in the morning and say hi mom or your mom cannot come back from work and you say hello mom how is it going <laughs> you say good morning ma <laughs> good morning sir good night ma here people are comfortable my kid will come back from school and say hi <laughs> please i'm an african immigrant i'm an african parent you tell me good afternoon mom 
yeah. yeah you look at yeah. a little bit awkward when yeah. you want to like greet people saying good morning ma'am good morning john good afternoon it's, the easy way out is usually hi hello how's it going and stuff like that so the 19th culture shock and the last one i'll be talking about today is nebo nebo and neighborhood you know on when i first arrived here I'll, I'll be like, um, um, I don't even know my next door neighbor, and to me, it's a worry. I feel awkward about it. I feel I should know them, and you can live in a neighborhood for years, and your neighbor will not come knocking on your door. You will not even know who that neighbor is. They drive in and out. Yeah, but <laughs> back home is not really like that, apart from the um civilization well, that's a civilization i won't really call this civilization but it has started happening in big cities now that never don't know themselves but where i grew up back home <laughs> we know this our uh, other neighbor is my man Mecca. we know this other one is uh my maybe <laughs> so <laughs> that neighborhood the neighbor friendship is like there if you get what i mean so do not forget to drop your own culture shock in the comment section. That's 19 culture shock that I had on my migration here. See you guys in my next video.